Do you conduct a business in the Plenty Valley or surrounding area? If so, consider Plenty Valley FM 88.6 for your business promotion. Our rates are reasonable and results positive. Call 9404-2111 during business hours for more information. We are now going to cross live over to the guys and girls at the Whittlesey Garden Expo. Thanks very much, Steve. It's Ken McGrail here, and I've got uh, Ron Ron Edmonds as well. Hello. And uh, okay, with, with us... <laughs> hey. Steve, says, good night, How you doing? How you doing, Steve? Good, mate. <laughs> Great show, by the way. Thanks, mate. Isn't it interesting, those two-minute uh, 1960s tracks... Um, uh, w- which sort of finish cold at the very end of it. Yes. No fade out, nothing like that. They didn't have the technology, I don't think. No, maybe they didn't. Um, talking about technology, we are live from the Whittlesey Garden Show and it's an amazing little display of talent. You can possibly hear some bluegrass music in the background. Yes. And sitting opposite me is Jenny Tout. G'day, Jenny. Hello. Uh, Jenny, um, you're with the Whittlesey Rotary Club. Mm-hmm. What's your involvement in this particular event? What, are you one of the key organisers? Or what are your, what's your part? Well, it's been a committee. Yep. But to, over the weekend, I've looked after the volunteers. Right. Um, but the committee itself is probably about ten of us, yep. and we've worked for twelve months to bring the event. It takes that long. I mm-hmm. say, basically, as soon as this packs up, you start on the next one. Mm. And I guess you, even while you're here, are talking to these guys saying, hey, do you want to come back next year? Or? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So Dawn is the person who has arranged all the stalls and spoken to the stall holders. Yep. Um, and Julie, who's our secretary, she's done dom- most of the PR and um, internet and emailing. And I've done a lot of the poster yeah, okay. and talking to different people within the community and ask them whether they'd like to be involved on the weekend. Fantastic. So um, how many stalls do you have here today? Uh, have around one? about 35. 35. And we've got uh, a lot of uh, what I can see here, flower stalls, nurseries, um, tools and stuff like that, and, and some local crafts. Is there anything that I haven't seen that you'd like to bring to my attention? That's a particular highlight for you. Uh, well, there is an arrangement, like you just said, but we've also got some people who've got cut flowers. Right. And they're dahlias um, and zinnias, oh. and they're beautiful. They're local people from Hume Vale. And we've also got Andrew from Tellerook, and he's got some lovely cut flowers and beautiful seedlings. Nice. Um, there's also um, inside is the CWA. and the Chandler Pavilion. Yep, yep, and they've got some lovely home-baked items and there's bulbs for the first time this year and um, there's indoor plants, there's yep. pots. Yep. So there's a beautiful array of different coloured pots. Oh, I can see them from here. They're fantastic, those yeah. pots over there. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. J- just, just do us a favour. Hold up your thumbs. What colour are they? Are they green? No, no, they're yeah. all different colours. You're not, you're not a green thumb yourself? Yeah, I am at <laughs> yeah, home, okay. yeah. I've got a vegetable garden <laughs> and a garden with lots of different things in it, including lots of roses. And uh, what, are we, what are we picking at the moment in terms of uh, your uh, Still getting tomatoes. Okay. Basil. Nice. Beans. Nice. So I could imagine a nice, either a salad or an Italian dish from at your place at the moment? Yep. Mm, yep, sounds yep, good. yep, yep, yep. Yep, rocket in it as well. Excellent. Good stuff. Um, now, this show will be here until 2, 3 o'clock today. 3 o'clock today. And there is be... there is a raffle, and that ah. will be drawn at 2 o'clock today. If I was to enter, what could I win? Uh, first prize is a cubby house that was donated from the secondary college at Whittlesey. Oh, fantastic. Worth over $900, I think. Wow. And second prize is... Or second, third and fourth prize are... Baskets full of lots of different things related to gardening. So Fantastic. books and And where do you get tools. the tickets from? Inside the Chandler Pavilion and outside the Chandler Pavilion. Nice. So there's two sites for that. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's worth your entry fee when you're doing that sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you come in and come, yeah. come in for $10, go away with a cubby house. And we mustn't forget the kids because there's things for the kids. There's face painting, an animal nursery. And oh. there's also Spotto. Yes. So they um, Spotto. Spotto. So they go across around the ground, and they've got to identify certain things that are on the page, uh-huh. and then they come back. And if they've identified 
most of them, then they'll get a small prize. Oh, awesome. oh lovely. I wonder if mm. I could disguise myself as a kid. <laughs> I'll just shave the beard off quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds like a lot of fun. Jenny, thank you very much for dropping in and having a chat with us. That's all and right. wish you all the best for the day. Yep. Um, if you'd like to send out any other messages or anything to the folks uh, listening in at the moment. Come along, but also remember that we have a golf day, which is out at the Hume Vale. Um, which is the Whittlesea Golf Club, and that's on Friday the 22nd of March. Fantastic. So if you've got a, anyone that wants to be involved in that golf day, then just contact the Whittlesea Rotary Club. Actually, just before we do throw back to, to Steve in the studio, um, if somebody was actually interested in being part of Rotary, is that something you're, you're looking for more members? Are you looking for people to become part of that particular group? Yeah. Um, what would they need to do to actually um, to find out more? Well, there is a um, pamphlet here. And there is a phone number, okay. um, which I can give, or they can just um, Google WhittlesearotaryClub.org.au um, or call 0447 542 214. And we, of course, we're looking for people yeah. who'd love to give back to the community. Oh, I think it's a fantastic Brilliant. thing. My yes. dad and my, my, my mum and dad and my grandfather are all Paul Harris fellows. Huh. So, um, got a you bit know of an I'm engagement. About. Yeah. Yes, I am too. Good on you. Well yeah. done. Well, thank you, Jenny. Ted, we're going to cross now to the Whittlesea Garden Expo. Streaming yes, live twenty four seven at PVFM. <laughs> are you going to do that, are you, Steve? We just press press the wrong button. <laughs> oh, here I'm here. <laughs> yep, you stream alive. <laughs> Thanks, buddy, Steve. Um, we're out at the show today at the Whittlesea Garden Show, and we've got a bunch of people coming into the tent that we have just beside the Chand Chandler Pavilion, and. Um, our next guest is, is Marion Steele. Marion, thank you so much for joining the, the station today. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for asking. Now, Marion, you're with the Country Women's Association, the CWA, and uh, not to be confused with the CFA. Uh, similar letters, but just um, if you need a cake, call a particular emergency number for you guys. <laughs> if you need a fire put out, call triple zero. Um, wh what's your role with the CWA? I'm the new president for this year for the Country Women's Association in oh, Whittlesea, so we're the Jumbana Knight Branch. Jumbana? Jumbana Knight Branch. So we're about uh, 26 women. What does jump, Jumbana? Is that an area or is that a... Um... Uh, Jumbana is from the Aboriginal world for getting together and meeting. Oh, right. Okay. Fantastic. And so you, you're for the Whittlesea Jumbana Branch? Yes. And uh, how far does that stretch? Members from uh, uh, we, all over? We've got people from Doreen, Mernda, all the way up to almost King Lake. Right. Um, uh, and sort of out towards Arthur's Creek. And, and, and there are other, other groups or There's chapters? There's other branches. So branches. Our, our nearest branches are King Lake, Hurstbridge, South Morang and Rosanna. And, and how networked is CWA? Do you do things together as a larger family of, of branches or do you stay pretty much in your own patch? No, we operate, CWA operates at three levels, so Country Women's Association, so you do things at a branch level which are very much focused on the community, mm. so your specific community that you live in, work in, whatever. Yep. Then there's the groups, and we actually refer to ourselves as the Diamond Valley Group, where we'll operate together for a bigger purpose, Yep. and we'll talk about that shortly. Yeah, sure. And then there's the Country Women's Association of Victoria, and that's when you see us do the big things like the Royal Melbourne Show, where we're famous for our scones, obviously. I lined up last time. I yeah. got one. <laughs> You're very lucky. We, <laughs> we do run out. We will take on big projects and we lobby the government on behalf of um, things that we think matter a lot to women, children, families yes. in Victoria. And we will also do fundraising for much bigger projects. Mm, mm, mm. You know, so some of the things that we've worked on and lobbied, say, in the last couple of years is tighter legal controls over the inappropriate massage parlours, the ones oh, yeah. that aren't yep, actually yep, offering massage, yep, yep. in order to protect the number of women that were being brought in illegally to work in them. Horrible sex trafficking. Yeah, yeah. so you don't think of Country Women's Association doing things like that, but... We were one of the big lobby groups to increase the powers of the police cool. to help protect and rescue those women. That is fantastic. Wonderful. Um, 
just out of curiosity, in today's sort of um, all-inclusive uh, world, does the CWA face challenges in that sort of picture? Being, is it a women's only organisation, or is it? Uh, how does that sit? It's traditionally been a women's only association, and I can only talk about yeah, our like, branch because well, yeah, I've yeah. only been got two sure. years. But all ages, hmm. um, all backgrounds, yep. all colours. Yep. Um, I don't know if we've had any transgender. Or any men? No. No. I mean, I, I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure because it's, it's, it's a great organisation that does a lot of good. Yeah. And, I just, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to make any sort of judgement call, mm. but it was just an interesting sort of picture, whether you've had to face that or not. But no. No, not something we've had to face. And I suspect that it's sort of one of those places that they originally designed for social life as yeah. well as helping the community. Yeah. As well as all the things we're known for. So, so what's happening today uh, with the CWA here at the Garden Show? So we are here as part of the community in mm -hmm. Whittlesea, but also as part of our fundraiser. So catering, cake stalls, those things, they are probably our biggest fundraising. Awesome. Right. So we're here today and you can pop along and there will be great freshly made sandwiches by the CWA ladies. Yeah. Um, there's a few scones left, not many. Anzac biscuits and all your favourite slices, yeah. uh, tea and coffee. But the money that we use from all of that, from all the different cake stalls and things that we do, then goes on to support much more local projects. So we were able to help four students with uh, transition costs for schooling last year. Fantastic. And um, we'll do, we're hoping to do the same again this year. So going from grade six into secondary school or to allow two children we were able to have give substantial support to to help them make the transition into year 11 and 12 and finish their education because it's a, you know the cost of living stuff yeah. some of those are really starting to impact in a big way so that was a real kind of thing that we do wonderful and um Sorry, I mean, did you have anything you were asking? I, I, I did have a question, Ken, but yeah. I've just gone blank because <laughs> <laughs> I was listening so intently. I know, here I am directing traffic and uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> Is there anything that you'd like to particularly highlight at the moment for us, Marian, that's going well, on? Well, there's a couple of things. We've got a few big plans. Uh, so there's the fundraising that we do, as you can see, that sort of goes towards the community and that'll be projects as they come up during the year. We do a lot of community engagement, so this is not just about fundraising for us, that's oh. also working together with Rotary. Absolutely. And being part of the community. And in May, we're teaming up with the Yarra Plenty um, Libraries, and we're hosting the Cancer Council Biggest Morning Tea oh, nice. at the You're library wonderful. down yeah. there. So, sort of, anybody who's interested, keep an eye out, come along, because some of the other things that we do from our craft point of view is we make. Um, they call them mastectomy bags and syringe bags hmm. for um, people going through cancer, yep. beanies. I mean, when you've got such a fantastic group of knitters and everything else. So, and last year, you were asking about men early, we specifically focused on making sure beanies for men because there was a lot of stuff coming in for women and breast cancer, but all the men facing treatment yeah, yeah. Lose their hair as well. You know, you've actually... I, I asked the word... In, I said the word mm. inclusion before, but what you've just described to me with working with, with Rotary mm. and working with all the other agencies like the Cancer Council and stuff shows me a very inclusive mindset and a wonderfully open sort of a, an aspect to CWA. Well, I joined be after I'd retired. Yeah. And I look, wanted something that was really involved in the community. Yeah. And found friendship. Yep. Found people with similar mindset yeah a way to help the community that i could really see and really you can get your hands dirty if you like good. it doesn't matter what you do and so that's a good segue then if people are interested in becoming involved with the cwa either here in this area or or their own local area how do people get involved well quickest way type in country women's association and that'll show you who the local ones are you can find all of the local branches on facebook as well so if you type in Country Women's Association Whittlesea, we will pop up um, yeah. because that's part of the name. And then it's just a case of sending us a message and we will respond and welcome you along. We've got 26 fabulous members at the moment. And I think it's, isn't it the story that if you line everybody up and you, there's a newbie there, yeah. that it's pretty much guaranteed their president the next year? 
I can't guarantee it, but I can guarantee you will be involved within your first six months. Seriously. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. So it's really just get get in touch because we'd love to have you. It's, yeah. 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 Nice one. Thank you so much, Marion. It's great to hear from you and hear about the CW. And it is time now to cross live to our outside broadcast team at uh, the uh, Whittlesea Showgrounds. Thanks, Harry. Uh, so uh, away we go. All yours, guys. Thanks, Harry. It's great to be here. And it's uh, somebody's keeping the, uh, the, scun- the sun and the blue skies under wraps just to keep it safe for later or something because there's this cotton wool like covering over the top of it at the moment. It's a bit grey and miserable. Well, not miserable. Would you call it grey and miserable? I would call it really refreshing after all that hot weather. Okay. <laughs> Melissa King, welcome to Plenty Valley FM. Thank you so much, Ken. Everybody might recognise Melissa's voice if you've watched Better Homes and Gardens. That's right. Or Every Friday night. If years ago you listened to 3AK. 3AK, that's a long time ago. <laughs> but gosh, it was a good start doing radio. Yeah. Loved it. So um, you're here at the Whittlesea Garden Show uh, and I believe you're doing some some talks. And Yeah. So I've just completed a talk on indoor plants, which is very trendy right now. Everyone's greening their homes. Yeah. But this afternoon, so at one o'clock, we're going to talk about autumn gardening. So hopefully I'll inspire everyone to get out into the autumn garden. The weather's cooler. You can actually it, it garden. Is. And we're going to look at some little autumn planting projects. So one with bulbs and a cool little hanging basketball. Do you have, like, the special tricks where you're supposed to stick the bulbs in the freezer first to make them feel really cold and then plant them? <laughs> Not or? the freezer, the fridge. Not the freezer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, some of them, yeah. So, for example, tulips. Yeah. You need to chill your tulips in the fridge for a good six to eight weeks before planting. That so, sounds like but, a, yeah. something you say oh. to somebody, hey, chill your tulips. <laughs> <laughs> Just settle I might, down. I might start it as a saying, you know. Never know. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. So um, that's the the plan for the next few weeks. Get ready for autumn. Get ready for your, yeah. your flowering. And the I think um, autumn's such a great time for gardening because you get your plants into the ground now. It gives mm. them plenty of time to establish a good strong root system before the summer hits again. Mm-hmm. So autumn's become really a, just a great time to do your planting. It's also a changeover in the garden. So we go from planting and harvesting or harvesting all of those summer things to now planting the things that will provide us with food through the winter months. So, Makes sense. Yeah, so you might be still harvesting tomatoes and capsicums and a few things, but come March, April, you're planting all your brassicas. So, yes, yes. You know, I've already got a, cauliflower, I've got a cabbage that, sitting there ready to try to yeah, start growing. So you'll notice the garden centres are now just getting full of all those wonderful seedlings for food through the winter months. So, mm. yeah, exciting times. So mm. have you got any hints for keeping a lovely chocolate Labrador out of my veggie patch? You know what? I have. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> we have a spitz Right. What's a Spitzky? I uh, know. He's a cross between a husky and a German Spitz. He's beautiful. He's a like a Spitzky. Yeah, he's like All a right, medium. That's a new word, folks. I know. There you go. He's a medium, like medium sized looking husky wolf mm-hmm. dog with bright blue eyes. Oh. Adorable. Yeah. But when I got him, he's a digger. Oh, right? no. Oh, my God. And every time I would plant something, he would dig it up. And he also pees on everything. And John <laughs> pee kills plants, right? It does. Or certain plants. Yeah. And he just loves getting into my garden bed. So I've spent years working out little techniques for it. So one thing I do is yeah. I plant a lot in pots or raised beds ah. so that he can't, um, when he pees, <laughs> excuse us, he can't about lift the leg that high. He can't right? lift his leg that high, which is great. <laughs> Although I did catch him plonked up in one of my big planter boxes the other day. I had to tell him off. But normally planting in, in raised beds or pots is a really good one. Right. I also plant prickly plants That's around not a bad idea. where I don't yeah. want him to go in. So he was he has this thing where if the garden bed is well established, he'll leave it alone. Mm. But if I've freshly planted a new garden bed, that's it. And I also put stakes around like so if I'm trying yeah. to establish a new garden bed, I'll put stakes around to stop him getting in. Okay. Yeah, not not a rump or a, a tender loin. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not, not that kind of garden stake. No. And um, the other thing you can do, because they they like to have areas to dig in, so you can actually create dedicated areas for them to dig. Yeah. So you have like a sand pit or something that you encourage them to, to dig in that area, not in your garden. My bed. problem's not so much digging, but this uh, if you've ever had a Labrador, you know that they are eating machines. Yep. And so I had some carrots starting to grow. Mmm, Indy likes carrots. Munch, 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 munch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you see these nose-shaped holes around each of the little That's seedlings. <laughs> I would be trying to, until they're established. I don't know. She, she might like it when they're more advanced and, and eat more. But I, I would try the stakes around yeah. the edges until those plants can get well established. The raised, the raised garden bed works a, a treat yeah. for us. 
Um, but aren't they funny? They are. They dogs, are terrific. The things they do. It's such such oh, entertainment. I'm, I'm taking mental notes of all this because <laughs> our dog also likes to rummage around all the uh, <laughs> the, the newer stuff and yeah. doesn't dig anything up, but just sort of trudges all over it and stomps on it. For a while there, hmm. I was using Toffee as a little planting machine, so I would take him out with me and I'd go dig and dig a <laughs> hole and then I'd plant into it. But now I wonder if I've created a rod for my own back that yes. he just thinks that's his role is to dig I up I remember his where that thing was. I'm going to go back for it. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah, I learned my yeah. lesson, I think. <laughs> nice one. So, um, Better Homes and Gardens is a big part of your, your week, it I is. understand. Yeah. So, what's the, what, uh, we watch a 90-minute show, is it? Uh, it's a big show. I mean, can you imagine the work that goes into creating 90 minutes every well, week? I can. Yeah. I mean, the actual filming, you'd be having a like a potentially a four-to-one ratio of raw footage to what you actually put to air. Yeah, and then you're looking at all the edit time. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's, Voice-overs, reshoots. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a beast, it really is. And I um I tend to film in blocks, so I'll fly to Sydney and I'll film a good chunk of stuff, or I'll do some things in Melbourne. Um, and yeah, we do, we don't work as far out as some of the the shows, which is great. We can have quite a good turnaround. Yeah. So for example, we've got the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show coming up, Hi. and in we literally film that on the Tuesday and Wednesday of the show, and then it goes to air that Friday night. So yeah. that's not normal, that's quick. That's but quick. but you know they I'm can quick, do yeah. this kind of I'm, quick. I'm I'm watching it all assembled because I work um, uh, on Exhibition Street and I overlook that whole garden area and I'm seeing the steel f- structures going up at the moment. It's it's quite quite early that they get into it. They do and it's like, I can't remember if it's, I think it's three weeks the designers get to build on their gardens. Mm. So it's, it's quite an exercise and, you know, it, you, you're looking at, I mean, the Carlton Gardens, you know, beautiful, big, oh, established trees wonderful. and the Royal Exhibition Buildings. Mm. I mean, what a, what a platform for a show like that. It's just incredible. Unfortunately, a little bit of a protest at the moment from the Friends of Carlton Gardens, um, saying that they don't believe that that was actually what the place was designed for, but hopefully the organisers can work around that. And, and Yeah, I know help. that a lot of work it goes into protecting the gardens. There mm. are a lot of protocols that everyone has to adhere to in yeah. order to run a show like that. So... Um, yeah, hopefully they can work something out. That'd be great. Now, um, you're here for the rest of today at the Whittlesea Garden Show. What are you going to be doing for the for the folks when they come along and uh, pop up to see you? So right now, before my next talk, I'm going to wander around and say hi to everyone because I love that when you come to these local garden shows, you can pick up some real plant bargains Ah. and and you can often pick up plants that you just can't find anywhere else, which is amazing. And I noticed over there, there are buckets full of dahlias in full bloom. So I'm going to pinch some of those, or not pinch, pay. (laughs) Some of those take home from my table. I think they're incredible. And then, yeah, then the talk at one o'clock. Great. So autumn gardening. I hope you'll join me. Um, And it's, it's in doors and it's you know lots of inspiration excellent melissa thank you so much for coming and having a chat with us at plenty valley fm you're most welcome Uh, as you said we're at the whittlesea garden uh, expo in at the whittlesea showgrounds and we have now uh, janine janine and i have michael chapman from the whittlesea photography agency welcome the, the, thank you very much. Is that and, right? Well, not quite. But no, we're, that's we're what I've written there. The, 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 the Whittlesea Photography Club. Club. Okay. Cross that out. So, how <laughs> did you get involved in being here at the, ex, um, at the Expo? At the, the Expo. Um, well, the, the, the club uh, tries to, to take part in, uh, in any local um, show that's coming along. We are very much involved in the Whittlesea show, mm-hmm. um, and we put together the, the, the photography competition in the Whittlesey show um, and this is just part of it we, 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 we've got a, we have an appearance here that at the moment there are four club members in there including me so um, you know we're keen to, to, to get new people in and this is one of the ways that we can get new people in yes if they want to get involved how do they how do they get involved um, generally um, well, Whittlesey Show is another place where people come and, and talk to us. Um, we'll, we'll take, we're, at the moment, we're taking their names and we'll send them out a syllabus for the year. Um, our years uh, begin in January um, and probably our two places that we, we can um, recruit people. One is here mm-hmm. and the other one is the show. But this one is better because it's closer to what we're actually... We know we've, we're already into the year, mm. whereas if, you, if the Whittlesey show is in November, we, it, that's the end of our year. 
Yeah. And uh, we, we started again. We, we've just done a, 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 a photography course, which was open to the public, mm. um, and, and got uh, another couple of members from that. But um, most of the people came were, were our own club members. Right. And um, you've got so many great pictures in there um, at the moment. Which one would be your favourite of, of all of them? And did any of you guys take those? Or are they oh, they're all it? taken by, um, by our members right. in there. Um, the, I've only got one in there. Uh, I, I, I'm being being a male. I came along with some um, aeroplane photographs, and they said, "Mike, this is a flower show." Ah, um, that's a problem. <laughs> and I found one in my bag of a robin. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a robin. So, uh, hence, hence all of the photos being of flowers. Uh, flowers, and, uh, you know, like yeah. But yeah. Uh, your repertoire would be, amongst the club, would be a bit wider than that normally, yes? Um, I like um, wildlife yes. photography. Yeah. So my, my equipment is sort of... It, it's towards wildlife. Yeah. Um, so how do you do that? Because, I mean, obviously wildlife is not an easy thing to capture and they move and you've got to be quiet. How do you actually go about getting the perfect picture? You get a lens that's, that's long. <laughs> right. So, and you, 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 um, you take your photograph. With the cameras today, um, have got, um, they're much bigger um, files, if you like. Mm. Um, they got a lot of megapixels. Mm -hmm. So if you take a long shot, um, maybe 200 metres of away, um, I, I got one of a fox the other day, and it was just this tiny bit in the part in my in the photograph. When I got it onto Lightroom, I was able to then crop it right down into just the, the fox. Oh, wow. And it was still pretty detailed, high and, res? And the detail was there. Yeah, so that's Adobe Lightroom you're talking about, isn't it? Yes, the photography it is. Software, yeah. It is. Um, yeah. And there are a number of AI um, things that you can get today. One, uh, one that I've been using is called Topaz, which also will improve um, the, the, the megapixels too. Oh, so that's actually good. I've seen a lot of ads for that, and I keep dismissing them. <laughs> so that's actually a good tool. Uh, they sometimes they get you in on these things, yeah. and you think it's a one-off, and then they, um, a couple of years later, say, no, you've got to pay that every year. So, no, I'll stick with what I've got. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the up, the, you can keep the updates. I've got quite happy with what I've got. Mm. So um, do you have to have special gear to, to be in the club or no. anything like, you know, fancy we've, cameras and things? Or? Um, we've got people who have got telephones um, more more there are more photographs taken on a telephone mm. than than ever with a camera mm. these days mm. um, uh, the, 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 I suppose in some respects the, the, the more upmarket your your equipment um, the, the, the easier it is to take a, a, a wildlife photo mm. Um, yeah, um, I also quite like um, uh, you know boy things like yeah. aircraft. <laughs> I used to do a lot of sports photography. Yep. So you had to have the, the same thing. And yeah. So you're you're, you're taking uh, a photograph that, that requires um, speed. Yes. To take it, mm. um, my camera will take um, eleven pictures in a second. Wow. So um, one of those is going to be sharp, hopefully. Um, uh, and that's the beauty uh, of the digital photos, isn't exactly, it? Yeah, as exactly. opposed to film. Mm. Exactly. Um, we did in um, 1972. We did an overland trip to Australia, and we came with, um, I think, nine 35 millimeter um, uh, films. So we had 35 times nine. And that wow. was it mm. for a three-month trip. Wow. Whereas um, you can knock off that. Uh, with a with a digital camera in two you know, seconds, yeah, a couple of <laughs> yeah. hours, an hour, easily, mm. um, and and you end up yeah. um, with these large files of photographs. Um, I I and did a stint a little while ago with a photography that's a long time ago, and uh, this is back before digital, uh, but it probably accounts for digital as well. And he was a big fan of taking pictures um, close to dawn and dusk and yep. you called it the magic hour is that something that still applies it, it, to the, you guys the uh, the, um, the whitest light mm. is in the morning and at night mm. in the evening just as the sun goes down yeah the, the best light is in uh, in the evening mm. the last hour in the evening and, and when the sun comes up in the morning excellent so that's mm. the, the magic hour yeah so if anybody wants to get involved in the club how do they actually do that um they can get on to the, there's a website mm -hmm. Um, uh, or they, they um, 
Okay, well, that probably that's the easiest way, but most of the most of the time, it, we we do it face to face yep. when we meet people. And when do you meet? We meet every Thursday. Sorry, once once a, um, a month. Uh, at the fire station in Whittlesey. Okay. Um, uh, they can come to that. It's the last Thursday of the month. Uh, very welcome to come along to that. Um, see if they like us. And um, come along to a couple of meetings if they like us. If they do, then they can join. Hmm. Um, so what happens to the photos then? Do they post them on places like Flickr or uh, Instagram or, or do they sell them or, or what? Both, probably. Yeah, okay. Um, we've got a private um, yeah. Facebook page, right. which is private. Yep. You, you, you have to get on, to get on it. Yeah. Um, we have to put you on it. Um, and so a lot of the photos um, share it there. Are, are shared on oh, that. That's fantastic. And that's, up, that's every day. Uh, they, yeah. That changes. Brilliant. Um, all right. Well, Thank you might. for coming in. We've got to wrap up because we're going to go to the news soon. So, But thanks so much for coming Pleasure. in. Pleasure. Uh, Thank you Michael. for having us. But anybody and, um, that is listening should actually make their way here to the Whittlesea Showgrounds and come and see definitely. the yeah, come there's, see us. there's plants, there's pots, there's food, there's face painting, there's lots of things to look at. There's a market, plenty of stuff. And uh, we are now about to cross to our intrepid uh, outside broadcast crew out at the uh, Whittlesea Garden Expo. Uh, at the uh, Whittlesea Showgrounds. So, uh, yeah, if you're um, uh, looking for something to do, head on out there because it's, uh, it's, a, great, uh, it's a great show and uh, lots, of do lots to do, plenty of food, plenty of music and obviously a lot of gardening stuff. So let's head out there right now. Are you going to come out a little bit later, Harry? Um, yeah, I might. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's space for you, buddy. I'm, I'm um, sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, if you feel like... Um, you were just saying about food and all the rest of it. Uh, if you feel like a snag, the sausages here run by the, the Rotary Club and uh, hamburgers. We've also got um, Sri Lankan street food. And, of course, we've got ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. And, and if you have the craving for a cake or an Anzac biscuit or something of the sort, the CWA ladies have got their stand inside as well. Mm. And we'll rope you in for one of their delectables. And if you're not wanting food, there is plenty here from um, plants to, to purchase plants. And, and there's, some bargains. There's some really good bargains. <laughs> there's actually a, um, a nursery here and they're called Affordable Nurseries. And they're actually a wholesaler. They don't sell direct. Yeah, don't go to the next one, which is called Unaffordable Nurseries, because <laughs> no. they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so you can get some really good bargains here um, this weekend. And it, the, everyone's so lovely too. Yeah, so true. It's, it's hey, talking of lovely, we found this um, lady's doing flowers and stuff, haven't we, G? Oh, we have, and she's <laughs> amazing. You should see the flowers. It's such a colourful um, stand that she's got. Rebecca, thank you for joining us. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me along today. I appreciate it. Tell me about you and what you do and all the and your story. Sure, love to. So we actually live locally uh, in our beautiful city of Whittlesea, and we're just in Humevale, which mm -hmm. is down the road from Whittlesea uh, and we've lived in that space since 2017. Um, we've been on 20 acres and a lot of it is um, sort of bushland but at the front we've got a couple of cleared um, spaces. Yep. So we've recently sort of around October, November we started to think about what it was that we could actually do with the land mm, and maybe mm. look at sustainability and giving back a little bit to the environment that's ar around us as well too mm. um, and we just sort of picked up on flowers in particular dahlias seem to be or dahlias I it depends how you pronounce dahlias. it dahlias. Dahlias, yes. dahlias, dahlias I know whichever. that's the big the big question and you um, grow tomatoes and tomatoes too <laughs> yeah. <laughs> potato potato <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, so we looked at um, different ones and we sort of got caught up in it a little bit and realised that there was a really big market for them yeah. um, and some particular cultivars that are quite difficult to um, to get and that sort of hooked me mm. um, and we ended up planting for the very first time around 400 um, types so I understand there's about 3,000 that you can get mm. um, I feel like it's a bit like Pokemon you got to catch them all <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of them are bigger or smaller and worth right. more like Pokemon too yeah, yeah so <laughs> totally agree so 
So yeah, so we've just started this journey, which has been so lovely. Planted them all to see, obviously, with our soil. We had to have a look at that and develop the soil as well as part of that process. We were talking about poo before, weren't yes, we? Yes, that's right. <laughs> I went over to a stand and we that's realised right. that you had to use a lot of cow manure. And I was thinking of my childhood as mum and dad used to get trailer load after trailer load of cow poo to change the veggie patch yes. to be a huge oasis. Yes. And it's still fantastic where they are. Yeah, that's so, right. So you've had to put a lot of yeah, hard so work in. Yeah, that's right. So sort of set up the rows so that we'd have the cow manure in there um, and making sure that we had the right conditions for mm. that. Mm. Um, so it seemed to work because we just have been inundated with all of these flowers and they are amazing. Great. So and, and there's a market for them? Yeah, well, we've, this is the first time we've ever come out to a market to sell them and we've had some terrific feedback from the people around us. But do you sell to retailers or to no, others? No, so we've just literally started. Right. Um, so we're, we're Jingles Barn uh, Flower Co. Right. Um, we've just built a big barn to go along with it as well too. So looking and to I watched of... it grow. Oh, you did? Oh, you're, you're, you're my neighbour. neighbour. <laughs> I would drive up the road and go, oh, what's that barn going to be? Yeah, Is that an indoor right. swimming pool? Or... Yes, did did it have did. the Amish look of the Amish barn or was it sort of a... No. Uh, yeah, it's quite classic American style barn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we've used the colour bond but we've got the beautiful wood oh, doors yes. at the front. So mm, Gorgeous. Yes. That would look great. Yeah, we wanted to, again, recycle. So there was the original... Um, old sheds mm. so we've actually used that as the lining and the roof and everything looks quite rustic so we'll, i mean when you go to a winery or to an o olive grove they have a cellar door yeah. do you have the same sort of a concept for your place like yeah a... eventually that's what we're hoping to my partner was more so hoping to use that for his space and his machinery <laughs> but i'm going to claim Man it cave. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that one away <laughs> but yeah that's i guess something that's just naturally happened and um it's a beautiful setting um, we've got the dam there too and the dam helps to feed through. Uh, we've set up all the irrigation um, through the dam so and we've got a few fish in there as well so we feel like that water's also helped. So it's a beautiful setting with lots of flowers and we would love to have people come along and have a look at it in the future. And you've also, I mean, up here we've got deer, we've got kangaroo, we've got yes. wombats, we've got possums. Yes. Basically we've got everything. Yep. So how have you actually been able to protect the flowers because I know that they love my oh, garden. I know. That, that's been one of the hardest things for us and I think maybe what took us so long to start it as well too was the time but we have put a lot of effort into the fencing um, and in particular I guess that rabbit proof fencing along the bottom because they still seem to dig under mm. as well too so it's not a big space on our block but the area that the flowers are in uh, we found that that's worked well uh, this season so we'll, we'll look at trying to continuing it mm. so now you've dipped your toe into the whole uh, sustainable flower growing yeah. sort of picture is are there are there future plans I mean, dahlias have been a great place to start. Yeah. They are very seasonal. Yes. Um, do you have other things that you would plant in other times of the year or plant ready for other times of the year as well? Yeah, so just prior to it, we sort of looked at the ranunculars as well and yep. we've got them coming through. So I dug them all up through summer and we're looking at sort of planting them in succession planting yeah. coming up into spring. Um, we also had a go at planting with seed um, as I sort of set up ourselves in the barn um, so that we could grow some zinnia uh, and things like that. So I think now it's time we put a lot of investment into developing the flowers that we've got now, but now we need to look at well, what's going to grow at this time of the year and continue mm. that for the mm. next few months. Because it is your business and I guess you yeah. need something that's sustainable for your family as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah so it's the next chapter. Yeah. So what happens now? Like you've got these absolutely beautiful flowers here. You've cut them all. Yes. Do the plants die down and you've got to dig them up again or yeah. do they just stay in the ground and just no, they're bulbs. Yeah, that's so you right. actually have mm. to put, pick, pick them up and then what? Put them in the fridge, or like dry, um, dry them out, said dry them out for a while first. Before yeah, we did it. yeah. So you actually they're tubers for dahlias in particular. Mm. So um, it's a process of digging them out. If they stay in the ground, they can um, rot. So okay. you, it's sort of a form of protection as well. But obviously, over this season, the tubers actually <laughs> duplicate underneath too, and then you can split them, and that's how you make. Um, more plants. Oh. So we'll be looking to, um, in the future, I guess, once our, our website's up and running, selling some of our plants as well too. A lot of feedback ah, here yes. today too. Yep. Um, and people wanting to actually grow them themselves. So and then you can start to muck around with your own cultivars too. Yeah. And, and see how you might be able to fine tune that red just to make it a bit more red. Or, yeah. yeah. So is that just you put them together, get the sticky tape, you know, <laughs> does that work? That's it, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Right. Amazing what you can do with gaffer tape these days. <laughs> yeah, so 
um, there are lots of different um, places that talk about breeding dahlias as well too. So that's something that we'd like to look into. I guess this season was about looking at what grew well in our area um, and getting those conditions right first, but something that we would really be excited to look into for the future. Well, knowing driving up that road and seeing those <laughs> beautiful flowers, they're definitely able to grow in this area. Yes. No, thank you so much for dropping in and having a chat. And we wish you all the very best with your adventure, your thank adventure you. and your ventures. Yes. And um, look, come on down to the Whittlesea Garden Expo, folks, and, and just wander across to to the stall and the yeah. name of the business again. So it's Jingles Barn Flower Co. Jingles Barn Fla Flower Co. And yeah. what's really great about the stall is it's not already set flowers, so you can literally pick the flowers that you want and make a display for yourself. Yeah. It's amazing to watch. And I was pick watching. a posy. Yeah, pick a posy. Yeah, it was it. great. And I was watching people do it before. It's, there's so much, like, this colour and this colour. So, yeah, it's really well worth coming down to see. Good, good. Thank you very much. My We're gonna... absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, you're playing some fantastic music, and I'm just tapping my foot along to it, Harry, so you can keep Thank on you. playing. But, but um, yeah, we'll have a bit of a chat first. And, G, who have you got with you? I've actually got, and anybody who listens to my show on a Tuesday from 2 to 4, Hidden Gems, would actually know this particular young lady, and this is Kathleen Tang. Do you know this voice? Yes. <laughs> Talk and see if they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think they might. I hope they do. <laughs> so Kathleen's actually our horticulturalist on our show every tu uh, or once a month on a Tuesday and talks about everything gardening. So let's ask a dumb question. If, for those who haven't thought about the career of horticultural horticulture before, what does a horticulturist actually do? Oh, we do lots of things. Um, there's work in retail nurseries, mm -hmm. um, wholesale nurseries. There's yep. work in with parks and gardens, like on cancels and things. And we yep. do things like weed control, pest control, soil preparation, planting. It's great. You're out in all the weather. And you get time to stop and smell the roses or you any do. other variety of plants. You do. You <laughs> certainly do. Yep. And you get to see some amazing things too. You get to come across sometimes wildlife and you get to see um, native insects and beneficial insects and things like that. So it can really be really interesting. You know, I went for a, my wife and I went for a walk up to Mount Sugarloaf in the King Lake uh, Ranges just the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago, and we we came across a guy who was taking photographs of beetles, and there were a whole bunch of the the the. the the badge beetles, like the um, the golden coloured um, beetles, and he he was showing me on his camera just the things that he'd been able to capture. There are hundreds of amazing species out there. Well, there's actually um, over sixteen thousand species of native bees in Australia alone. Sixteen thousand mm -hmm. bees that we know of. Wow. I, I did know that we could get like little blue ones as well as the standard colours and oh, ones that look like flies. And they come in many colours, many shapes and many sizes and most of them are stingless and harmless to humans and uh, they really do a huge job of pollinating. But essential to the environment. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, but we need more native trees planted in urban areas because they're under threat in urban areas because of competition with the honeybees for pollen because there's not oh, enough boy. native plant species around. Right, so, so we're effectively overpopulating with the imports. Yes. Okay, so um, what's what's your main focus when you uh, with Kathleen's Garden Consultancy on, on your shirt? <laughs> what, what's the main thing that you do? Well, I teach. Um, I teach short courses with um, adult community centres, um, so places like King Lake Ranges Neighbourhood House. There's a course running there starting on the 21st of March. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only two or three places left, so getting quick. Yeah. Um, we've also got course running every Saturday fortnight at Flowerdale. Um, and we also have a course running all year long at Epping Community Connections or Whittlesea Community Connections down in Epping and that's, um, that's actually only $20 a term so that's a really good fee for that. So do you see a variety of skill sets and a, a variety of kind of interests in each of those different areas? So if I went to King Lake or Flowerdale, would I get a very different sort of a group of people learning about stuff and therefore different stuff taught compared to what you see at the other places? Well, yes. Yeah, you do get diversity. So I do find some subjects change from one place to another. I also find the content of the subject might be the same subject, but it's just taught in a slightly different way. Right. Um, okay. And you find people do it for different reasons. Some do it just because they want to improve their gardening skills. Mm. Others want to find out what it's like to work in horticulture and see if it's something that they actually want to do before you go and spend a large money doing you know, a qualification course. Mm, mm, um, mm. And others sort of do it so they can get volunteer opportunities and things that are, they might be retired or semi-retired. and So you get a variety of people for a variety of reasons. And for your position as the teacher of it, you must get a, a sense of satisfaction of seeing people kind of the light come on in their mind of understanding what they're doing with the plant or what they're doing right or wrong in their garden, R right? I love it. 
Yeah. I do. I love the opportunity that I've, well, I've been given. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a lot of work, but I love the opportunity because I've met so many people. I've made some some permanent friends, um, G being one of them. Fantastic. And um, also, it's just, yeah, you do. You get to see people that come in and they're like, oh, I don't know about this course. And in fact, we had one student who G knows quite well from King Lake, um, and he came into my um, composting class and he was just a bundle of nerves. Did really well out of it, finished the course and ended up with getting our um, student achievement award for Victorian student for the Adult Learners Week. Which was just absolutely amazing. And, you know, he, she's so right. He was very nervous about it. And, you know, she's been able to cultivate the 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 want to learn and the confidence to actually do that. And, and that's what Kathleen does so well. I, I know on the show she talks about, you know, starting from the beginning and has made gardening so easy for somebody who is not a green thumb. Um, mm. You know, I've been able to actually grow so much because of Kathleen's guidance and listening to what she says. Now, here's a question. Uh-oh. Harlequin bugs. Yeah. Um, seem to be inundated with them at the moment. How do we get rid of them? And because I'm not Because everybody surprised. around here is actually having this problem at the moment in their gardens. It's been a good season. It has for been Harlequins. a good season. For an insect, it's <laughs> been a great season. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we get rid of them naturally? Well, you can actually hose them off. Use high pressure, just the high pressure setting on your hose and blast them off. Right. Uh, you can pick them off and squash them, but... Mm, they don't smell real great when you do that. Satisfying. It's like popping the bubbles on a... No, it's not. No, no, stop that. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. But yeah. uh, aren't they called, so, also called stink bugs as well? Yes. So, mm, no. no. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> um, they're on the rampage because the weather has been great for bugs. Yeah. Great for diseases. Not so great for us because we've had humid weather. We've had really quite moist weather. We've mm. had reduced mm. hours of sunlight. I mean, look at today. It's quite cloudy. and So they're just going, thanks very much. So picking them off or hosing them off is the best way to get rid of them organically. Um, you can actually buy some organic horticultural glue and, and actually paint it around the bottom of your plant stems to stop them getting up. Oh. So that works quite well. Um, and you can actually put barriers around, like organic barriers around the bottom of the tree to stop them climbing up. Um, but if you do have to resort to a, stri a spray, because everything when I teach is always from an organic, organic-based mm or natural. I don't hold with heavy synthetic chemicals and things that are going to leave residue. Avoid the glyphosate. One of the things, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and But certainly, and there's a number of products and brands now that are organic and organic based um, products. So they don't have the soil residues and they're yep. biodegradable and yep. they're perfectly safe. Um, so you can actually get a, a spray um, through organic crop protectants. Mm -hmm. Is um, that one of those nucleolic acid ones or is it a different sort of base? Some are, some are made from plant acids yep. um, but some are actually made from oils. Right, okay. Um, so uh, sea salts, pest oil is a really good organic one and that'll just coat them and what it'll do is once it coats the insect, it suffocates them. So is that like, um, I was reading online, because I said been inundated with them, uh, a mixture of oil, um, detergent and water? You kind can, of does the same thing? Yes, you can also use oil detergent and water. You can use a chilli and garlic spray as well, and there's plenty Ooh. of recipes for those things on the, on the internet as well. If you're going to spray, make it smell nice. Yeah, well, you <laughs> might as well. Yeah. Give them some to eat while they, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. True. Well, thank you so much for coming by. I, I know I My grabbed pleasure. you, I saw you walking by and I, I thought, come in and talk to us about everything gardening. And you'll be on air next on your uh, show, G. When? Yes, uh, probably school holidays, actually. Yes. So, yeah, but I'll obviously let all our listeners know your exactly when. Your people talk to her people and we'll Definitely. have a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, work out our schedules. <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing, working out our schedules, yes. <laughs> so, but thank you for coming on. My and pleasure. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, and for anybody who is interested in getting onto the King Lake um, Community House, um, to the course, what do they need to do? They can just go online to their website um, or they can actually give them a call. Uh, the course is $60 for a full fee and $50 for concession. It's for a 10 week course on a Thursday morning from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Excellent. So if you're up in this area, maybe jump on there and do the course and jump in quickly because there's only two or three spots left. And once they're gone, sorry, it's until the next term. It will be until later in the year, yes. There you go. Um, but yeah, I might just quickly. Uh, Cross to uh, our outside broadcast uh, marquee and uh, get someone to uh, uh, who's on site uh, give you a better idea of what's going on there at uh, the Whittlesea Garden Expo. Thanks, Hello. Harry. 
Oh, it's Ken here. Hi, Harry, Ken. Um, yeah, it, uh, I noticed that you did. You said it's our marquee. It's our salubrious marquee, actually. Very, very fancy um, with our fold-up chairs. Um, <laughs> My bad, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've actually just been uh, uh, looking around and just sort of taking in the atmosphere. And um, one of the places that... Uh, uh, what well, is not far from where I'm sitting is the Iron Stone Park Nursery. And I might say, g'day, Peter. I'm Ken. Pleased to meet you, Ken. <laughs> Peter, you have a, a nursery that is um, kind of a bit unique, I believe, in the sort of the stock that you have. Is that right? Quite a lot of the stock we've got is um, rare and endangered species of native plants from all over Australia, yeah. We okay. propagate an awful lot of that sort of stuff. So do you have a seed bank or so something of the sort that you actually work Just on? Just have a large garden. Um, we right. try to get whatever stuff we do from seed we basically get from out of there and all our cutting grown stuff is from out of the garden it's a lot of the rare stuff it's almost impossible now to get seed for it because it's so rare right unless you're actually growing it yourself out in your garden and some of that stuff can take up to 10 years before it's going to flower and produce a seed so um whereabouts are you finding the cultivation comes from where, where are you collecting the samples from uh, far and wide or are you oh, all over australia right yeah we have plants from down tassie we have a lot of plants from west australia queensland south australia new south Wales got a lot. And you guys are out at Heathcote, is that yep. right? So Correct. the the climate there must be reasonably temperate to be able to cope with all of that variety or do you have ways of setting up microclimates in your garden to suit those? Part of that. Yeah. Um, there are some plants we're never going to be able to grow. Yeah. Um, so it's pointless even trying. But, you know, people probably don't understand how many rare and endangered plants there are. You know, just in Victoria alone, the last thing I looked at, there was well over 2,000 mm. um, mm. that were, you know, from Category 3 down to Category 1, and Category 1's like one step away from extinction. extinction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... I've got my, one, one of my... My family has an involvement in, in horticulture and stuff. My brother runs a nursery at Backers Marsh yep. and runs a land care group over that way. Yep. And he's doing very much what you're talking about, you know, collecting seeds, cultivating and trying to build up native stock for replanting a yep. lot of those areas. Yep. Do you have particular land care groups or particular uh, businesses that you deal with or organisations you deal with or are you kind of more to the public in a, a selling Nature. No, we um, we do an awful lot of Australian Plant Society sales around Victoria. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that for 15, 16 years. I used to be the president of the Heathcote APS, Australian Plant Society. Um, no, it's mainly those sales we do outside there because you'll find with Australian Plant Society sales, people are coming along just to buy a plant and a lot of those people that come along like are collectors. Mm. So a lot of those plants, the rare ones that we do, is, fits into their their category of what they want. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious about um, Australian edibles. I, I yep. haven't looked a lot into it, yep. but I figure we had 40,000 years of people on the on the country. There must have been a lot of stuff to eat that we just look past or don't know that is there. Do you have many edibles in your in your collection? Well, we probably do 10 or 12 what we call bush tucker plants. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, it's become very popular. We used to grow a lot of it about five, six years ago, and it wasn't overly popular. But since COVID and since people have read discovered their gardens yeah, again, yeah, yeah. especially the edible side of it. Um, yeah, the bush tucker's fairly well taken off in the last couple of years, yeah. Anything you think would end up in a restaurant? You know, or is it sort of oh, a, an acquired taste? A lot of it does, but the trouble is um, commercially, I don't think there's enough farms around that produce enough of it because... Ah, volume. A lot of your yeah, yeah, bush yeah. tucker's got to be volume. I mean, you know, you make a beautiful flower or dampier out of wattle seeds, yep. but you've got to have a, a lot of awful lot, lot yeah, of them to make it. Yeah. Pound of flour, you know? exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, what about um, if you, out of your collection of uh, varieties that you've grown, is there something that you go, that's the chef's kiss, the piece of piece de resistance of the plants that you've actually got? Out of bush tucker? No, out of, out of out your of plants everything. generally. Have you got things oh, that you really love that you've got that is a special rarity? We've, we've got a, a hakea um, aculita. And what's that? Um, that's a very rare hake from Western Australia that grows a little bit like a big stick of celery, very prickly. Yeah. When it flowers, there's just masses of orange and yellow flowers all over it. Very difficult plant to grow. Um, and I'm lucky as chap in Bendigo has grafted a couple last year. We were lucky to put one in that was grafted. But we waited 15 years to get seed for it. Um, I got six seeds and got them all up and got them grown and they hate humidity. Yeah. I lost the whole bloom and a lot of them oh, after waiting. Oh, 
right. you know, that amount of time. We're lucky we got some more seeds. I think four and they came up. One survived, and it's it's getting going in the garden. It's going to be okay. I'd prefer to, if I can, grow a natural one than a grafted one. Mm. But we have got a grafted one as a backup in the garden because it's such a beautiful plant. And so, a dumb question because I don't know much about plants really, um, but uh, would you graft uh, one of these special hakias onto a different hakia or would you graft, graft it onto a different plant altogether that could actually no, you, work? A lot of your Western Australian stuff, you'll graft it onto the same species of plant that grows over in the eastern states. Right. Um, yeah, because we have some diseases in our soils and that here that the Western Australian stuff doesn't have, so um, that can knock them around a lot over here, or you get something that, you know, humidity and stuff like that. A lot of the Western Australian stuff doesn't like severe humidity. But the West Australia is very sandy uh, compared yep. to our yep. side of the country, which yep. is much more loamy and clay uh, and, and all the rest a, of it. That's another reason why you graft as well. Yeah. So you get something like a hakea. Normally you would graft that on the hakea salicifolia, right. um, which is a hakea, mm, I think in its natural habitat is up around on the Queensland New South Wales border. Right. We grow a lot of those. It's a big plant, gets to four or five metres tall. We grow an awful lot of those as a fire retardant plant for people in the bush that want a screening plant. So because you were saying about fire retardant. How does that actually work? Like you're saying it's a screening it's just plant. It's very hard to set it on fire. Simple as that. So it's the structure of the leaves or the... Yeah, the and the, the wood in it. I don't know whether it actually has something in it that stops it from being... Maybe well, the, I haven't gone that far into yeah, it, but yeah. it is, uh, it's probably the... Yeah, the best fire retardant native plant going around. Um, yeah, and we sell a lot of them for people up in the bush. Obviously, they have BAL fire ratings that are, you know, 12.5 and upwards. If you put it as a screening plant, you want a screening plant around your property of a couple acres or whatever, it's perfect for it. You've got to keep a bit of water into them for the first couple of years to get them going, and then they, they're usually pretty good. Friends of ours around the corner have got... Um, a daughter that lives up uh, on the New South Wales coast where they had the bad fires there a couple of years ago, and they had a two-acre property, and they had salicifolias around it. Most of the houses around them burnt. Theirs didn't. That's interesting, you know, isn't it? So it'll, yeah. it'll stop a good bushfire. They're quite... They're quite compact. There is, there's three forms of salicifolia. Are they, these are the spiky ones you were talking about as no, well. No, no, right. no, no. These are just a lovely rounded leaf. There's, there's three forms. There's the ordinary salicifolia, which can get a little bit woody. Yep. There's the one they call the compact form, which is the one we do. It's tight leaves, really nice from the ground up, and yeah. bushy. And then there is a fine leaf one, which we haven't got around to doing yet. But would it also be that it doesn't drop a lot of litter? And no, hardly any. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking that that's possibly part of the issue with the fire retardant. You don't don't want the no, kindling no. base to um, be around yeah, the bottom. Yeah. Unless they dry out and they're a bit desperate for a bit of water, and sometimes that'll happen when they're a bit younger. Yeah. You know, they might get to two metres tall and you get a couple of hot days in a row, they might want a bit of a drink before they get bigger and their root system's a bit more advanced. Yeah. Yeah. M mate, you've got your, your canopy out here with the Ironstone Park uh, pen, uh, shingle hanging from the front of it. Um, you've got plenty of stock there to... to to sell, you'd be happy to have people come down and um, peruse your goods this afternoon, wouldn't you? It's not... We're retired. It's not necessarily for us to make money, although the money we do make out of it goes back into our garden at home, which means we can nice. put more plants in and we can look after them much more better. Um, well, that's not the... I like more better. <laughs> that's good. More be it's, it's more better that's, English. I like that's that. That's bloody yeah. good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect, perfect. But, but um, how can we put it? My passion is the rare plants. Yes. And a lot of them are really on the verge of extinction. So the more of those plants we can get into people's garden, the more chance it has of survival. True. It's, it's as simple True. as that. We gave, you know, garden talk over there before. Um, it's quite common. People will come into your tent, they'll pick up a plant, and you'll say to them, that plant comes from Western Australia. In the wild, there's 25 of those left, so it's a very rare plant. Yeah, and the person yeah. will straight away bang the plant back on the table and you say, well, why did you do that? And I say, oh, well, uh, it's hard to grow. And I say, well, no, it's no, not. It's, it's not. actually an easy plant to grow. And it's then just its say, native oh. environment got wrecked. Then they'll say, yeah, yeah. oh, but I don't want to kill it. <laughs> or you say, well, Believe it it's on only myself chance of survival yeah. <laughs> is going to be if you put it in your garden. Exactly. So when we sort of finish doing a talk over there, we just say to people, if you see a rare plant in a nursery, buy it and put it in your garden because you're 
doing conservation. You know, a lot of these plants are only going to survive if that's what you do. There's already plants there that are only surviving because they've been put in people's gardens, you know. Peter, thank you very much for all of that. And all good. good luck with all of the, the growing and stuff. Mm. We th- uh, we're going to um, pass back to the studio in a moment, but uh, if you'd like to come down to the Whittlesea Garden Expo, it's still got an hour and a half left before we shut shop. And there's still a lot of plants here that you can actually purchase and there's still sausages and ice cream and I believe the CWA would nearly run out of all their slices so you, you might have to get in there quick if you want something from them. Yeah, excellent. Um, welcome out to the uh, uh, Whittlesea Garden Expo, folks. Uh, we've just about wrapped up for the day. Um, we've had some fantastic chats today, haven't we, G? We have. We've been so fortunate to have um, Rotary come on initially mm-hmm. um, and talk to Jenny, who was telling us about what they're doing in the community. And one of the things she didn't mention was that any money that's raised from this event actually goes to scholarships. So yeah. they actually go and support local local students who can't afford to be at school or university or whatever and that money is actually put to that. So that's what the any money that is raised is actually going to that today. Rotary do some top stuff. Um, they've got a bunch of different side associated organisations such as Romac and other things. Romac's involved in bringing people who need special surgery uh, and arranging with hospitals to get free surgery for those people who need like life-saving heart surgery or facio-cranial reconstructions if they've been born with a birth defect or something like that and they 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 arrange it all for free it's it's amazing and they get the top surgeons in the world not just australia involved in that sort of stuff they're Um, just an amazing organization and to put this on i mean this is a a community event like cfa uh, cfa cwa all the cas CAs. (laughs) (laughs) um you know not the chartered accountants though no no, i don't think they're involved today (laughs) so rotary uh men's uh, men's shed you know they're all involved in this event today and or this weekend and it's been an amazing event and it actually harry the whittles whittlesea country music festival association has their tent uh two two tents along from us oh is that right yeah, so the WCMF is written on the top of the thing. Okay. Um, and so uh, that's coming up later in this year, isn't it, Harry? A special yee-haw to <laughs> <laughs> well, When is that? That's sort of... Um, that was in February. That was February. It's earlier in the year. Sorry, I got my directions wrong. Yep. Um, talking of things coming up, and we've talked about the, the caber tossing, but uh, something that's sporting but possibly a little bit less tartened is that of uh, <laughs> community <laughs> cricket. <laughs> Um, and I've got, we've got the cricket finals here on Plenty Valley FM on the 23rd and the 24th of this month. And I was just trying to look up because I got myself all confused. I couldn't remember which particular cricket league it was. It's not the the um, the Whittlesea Cricket Club or the Nillenby Cricket Club and the Plenty... Anyway, you'll have to look it up. But listen, on the 23rd and 24th of this month, if you love cricket, if you love being live and local, Plenty Valley FM will be there broadcasting from that time. I think it's the Northern Metropolitan Cricket League or something like that. Ah, That's nice one. It. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had no clue. <laughs> but I do know that Anzac Day is coming up as well and yep. Plenty Valley FM will be broadcasting the Dawn service Absolutely. From, from that particular event too. So it's from, from the uh, joyful to the sporting to the more sombre and reflective. We, we cover a lot of genres here at the radio station. We oh, do. we do. And country. And country, and country. Uh, so, um, I've always got to plug the show, man. Mate, absolutely. <laughs> and you do a good job of it, too. Thank so, you. The, um, the show has got another hour. If you'd like to come down, maybe cop a bargain because there is the wholesale gardening, uh, wholesale nursery still here. There's a fellow who's been selling um, uh, geckos made out of iron. I think they're, they're made in barley but brought out. And there's all sorts of things of geckos, magpies, kookaburras, owls, um, and all sorts of different animals that you want to has, have as garden decorations. Quite pretty. There's still some dahlias um, to sell Yes, there are. Rebecca. That's and Einstein Park still has all the um, the rare and unusual Australian native plants that yes, you might be able to pick up there. Unfortunately, they've sold out of the fire retardant and stuff, though. So. But I'm sure if you asked him, he might be able to tell you how you can get the next batch. Yes. So there's definitely so much here. There's seedlings. There's... Oh, what is this? There's roses. So if you're into roses, there's a, a roses here. So there's there's still stock here if you do want to come down and um, you know pick up a bargain. Indeed, Harry. Thank you for being the anchor for us today. We'll uh, sign off now and wish you a very happy country day. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> talk to you next time.
Okay, um, and uh, look, uh, same, same to you. Um, you. You guys have done an absolutely splendid job um, out there today. Uh, so yeah, a, a big shout out to uh, you know Craig and yourself, Janine, Ron, Scott, everyone else who was if I missed them. Um, they've done such a great job of uh, putting it all together out there and uh, put, putting it to air and uh, you know introducing us to some really great people um, and interesting uh, interviews and of there course are some good people in our community aren't there mate oh yeah. they're absolutely beautiful people and uh, it, it uh, I, I count myself lucky to be amongst them uh, to be honest you know to to live in their midst so to speak exactly yeah um, and of course, a big shout out uh, also to uh, Bill McGillivray, who um, uh, traditionally has so much to do with our outside broadcasts. So I don't think we'd be able to do them without him. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, well done, Bill. I, I understand he put the marquee together. Um, uh, 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 what, a couple of days ago? Or? Hmm. He did. <laughs> oh, late breaking. Uh, Craig has texted me, uh, Craig Wright, our, our uh, fearless leader. Oh, feel, yeah, that's what he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just texted me, um, Harry, and he says, uh, City of Whittlesea Community Festival is on March oh. the 17th. Apparently nice. we haven't fully engaged yet with that, uh, haven't got that fully sorted, but that is another interesting community event that yeah. people might like to get involved in. City Absolutely. of Whittlesea Community Festival, March 17th. And with that... We'll hand off. Over to you, buddy. Have Thank a great you. day. Okay, thanks, guys. And uh, again, great job. Well done. Much appreciated. Good on yous. This is Errol Gray with Wally the Winger. No, it's not. Sturgill Simpson. <laughs> I'm served to love so kind Just keep me from losing my mind So enticing, deep dark seems It's so easy to drown in our dreams Oh, and everything's not what it seems This life is but a dream Shut up I love the local news. I love the music variety. And all the local sport. 24 hours a day, it's all local. 88.6, Plenty Valley FM.